We started in 2013, the, the um, you know initial year of the project, because after going to the Precision Management School, uh, we decided that the best thing we could do to improve our income on the farm was to do a better job of thinning our apples. That was kind of our weak link. This year, it you know worked a little better because uh, my wife Charlene was retired from teaching, and she was able to take over the management of that project. Uh, that is an issue for small growers because we provide a lot of the labor on the farm and right at the time when you should be measuring apples there's about you know a thousand other things you need to do in a timely fashion and this requires somebody that you know can do a good job and precise job and so that's why she got to do it and she can tell you more about that. <laughs> <laughs> I really didn't find that it was all that hard and the hardest part was trying to figure out the best time to do it with his thinning when he'd come out and done the chemical thinning and the in the weather and, and being able to get the person to schedule. That was only the, the only hard part I felt with it. Last year we saw that it worked. I think we sprayed some of the galas four times. Uh, this year we were more confident to go back and do that again. And you know, last year we had some you know our best fruit size ever in gale and I think we've got that same this year. Our crop is a little smaller, but we still have really, really beautiful uh, size gala that are gonna, I know they're gonna make us money. And because we got them thinned at the right time, and it also saved us a lot of money because we did not have to do a whole lot of uh, follow-up hand thinning. Uh, it was just a, like a t you know, light touch up and we used our, uh, our platform to uh, you know, cut the labor cost on that too. So it was, it's definitely a, a money saving thing to, to uh, have the thinning done right, the chemical thinning done right. I would say that our experience so far has been positive. Um, I, I think it's going to be a learn, learning curve for all of us. This is our first year involved in it. We've been a little bit hesitant to jump into all of the recommendations because it's been the first year and we're still slightly nervous um, of thinning apples at such a small stage. For us in our operation, the cost factor probably wasn't the largest factor that we looked at. It was more of a time. Did we have the manpower available at that time? From the cost standpoint, if we could reduce the amount of hand thinning that we had to do by spending the time and the cost of the labor for the precision thinning, I feel that we will certainly be rewarded for that in the savings and, and hand thinning. With the precision thinning, there, there's risk involved, and, and I'll have to say that uh, on, uh, on a honey crisp, um, I probably should have waited just a little bit longer to make that decision on that second spray or maybe reduced uh, that first spray because I do see we're slightly over thinned. Every year the conditions are different, so it's 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 a tough one. The ability to be able to make early decisions on determining, you know, how the thinner is working and having fruit size and return bloom. That's that's key to, to reduce hand thinning. Labor obviously is, you know, half our, our cost of doing business and uh, anything we can do, you know, to reduce that. So I, I think they have a good model in place and there's a lot of potential there and, and you know, I, I want to continue it again in another year. In Galas, we're trying to grow 65 apples on a tree that'll put peak size in, in 80 counts um, with 72s and 88s on either side of that and few, if any, 100 counts, which is where the, where the uh, biggest dollars are. We're, we're very big in our, uh, in our business in trying to maximize our income rather than minimize our expenses and very conscious of all the things we can do to increase the value of the crops. So precision pruning and precision crop load management, that's something that we've believed in for a long time and, and have been trying to do in a rudimentary way, which has really been um, pushed to new levels with all the science that's been provided through Cornell and Cornell Extension. So precision thinning certainly has been an area where the, has been a quantum leap forwards in the last three or four years in the things that we're able to do and understand about what we're doing with chemical thinners to, to make it more of a science than an art. It's a relatively inexpensive project to do. It's sometimes difficult to assign the time into measuring fruitlets and, and, and dedicating a person or two people for a number of days during um, the actual chemical thinning window. But in reality, we look at it and, and it cost us somewhere in the region of five or $600 a year to do these measurements by by using two of our uh, two of our employees and that knowledge that we're accumulating and it's helping us make thinning decisions 
on over a million dollars worth of Gala and Honeycrisp apples. 